Yeah, and something every point guard needs is a, a capable big man rotation, which was obviously probably the main uh, Achilles heel of the Raptors last season until it did get a lot better when Kim Birch uh, when it went in the mix there. But it's looking, at least I think us two think that it's looking a lot more competent coming in this year. I think there's a lot of different looks that they can throw at teams. Birch is probably the de facto starting center. Um, and then we got uh, Precious, who I think yeah. all three of us are very high on coming off the bench. Boucher, probably starting at the four to start the season when Pascal is going to be, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, rehabbing still. And then we still we got, you know, Freddie Gillespie still. Who knows? Like OG has played some small ball five in the past. There's a lot of different looks we can throw at teams. And I think it will be a lot more competent and, uh, and versatile than it was last year. Yeah. And again, I think that's what this that what makes it badly got so many different guys who are very versatile and can play so many different positions. Speaking of summer, as we talked about summer league a little bit earlier, and I think probably Precious Achua was the one who, who won the most fans hearts over uh, this, this summer league, just with his hustle, like hustling, like a summer league game was game seven of the NBA finals. Uh, he yeah. is a little unpolished, I think, but there's not too many guys, his size who can, who can jump like he does with the wingspan that he does. And it seems like he has a really good motor and work ethic. So a little raw, but under Nick Nurse and under the Raptors whole organization, I don't see why he can't be a guy who can emerge as like a, a very talented big man who, who can probably start at some point, maybe not this year, but in the near future as the five. Yeah, I w- like I was initially um, not only excited, but a little surprised that Miami actually parted ways with him. I, like I, I get why they did it because you're in win now mode. You want Kyle Lowry, you're going for a championship, but just because he's like so raw and his upside's very tremendous. Yeah. Like precious coming back. I think we're going to see as soon as the season, that was a big get for the Raptors. And I think he is going to be an integral part of this team's uh, identity and core moving forward. Yeah, for sure. He's six, eight and he has, he's a small ball center, but he moves so fast. And with that wingspan and strength, he essentially could guard almost every center. And the two guys that everyone are going to bring up, Jokic and Embiid, yeah, they're probably going to cause a small ball guy like him a lot of trouble, but who don't they cause trouble to, right? They cause right, everyone yeah. in the league trouble. Yeah, that's that's the only thing that's going to be interesting when the Raptors do play those traditionally big centers, right? They We'll see how they fare, but I think that might be their Achilles heel when you got to go up against, like you said, an Embiid or, or Jokic who could just pulverize you inside. As we saw Giannis take DeAndre Ayton to school in the NBA Finals, um, and if a guy like DeAndre Ayton, who's 7'1", 270 or something like that, is getting kind of pulverized inside by a big like Giannis, I don't think anyone's going to stop him. So, you know, there's there's three or four guys in the league who are going to give this team trouble, the Raptors trouble. But again, like who's stopping those guys? Yeah, it's an anomaly. Exactly. You just got to accept it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here so you never miss the best clips from Stretch the Floor. Hit the links in the description below to find us on all podcast platforms. And follow us on Instagram.